guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on the channel where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. We are back again with another video on Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, and much like the chapters before, this one is absolutely ripe with content that goes normally unused. I highly recommend watching my first video on this chapter for more context as I'll probably be referencing back to it a few times here. But anyways, in this part we'll be going over some more hidden secrets, unused animations, sounds, and more. So huggy wuggy that like button below, it's time to check out some more Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 Lost Bits. Alright, so for starters, since a bunch of you have been leaving comments about this on my first video, as I guess I'm a bit late to this party, let's chat about two unused secret areas found just out of bounds in the Playhouse map. So first, it turns out that just beyond this wall in this pool section is the entrance to a scrapped ride segment, where the plan was for the player to actually ride the duck boat things found around the area. And it turns out that it's actually functional too, as if you go up to this boat here and interact with it, you'll actually get sucked into it and you'll phase right through the first gate as it starts to move. This duck ride slowly takes you through the area and you'll come up to a few of these closed gates where you have to pull on the lever nearby to slowly open them up. Well, at least the first one works, for some reason by the time you get to the second gate here, basically no matter where you aim, the grab pack hands will just like grab onto some invisible thing just above you, thus making getting through the rest of the ride normally impossible. Now I've seen theories around the internet for this area mostly either it being a scrapped segment for escaping Dog Day as you have to get through this ride while he chases you, or alternatively, this would have been another area where the mini smiling critters would chase you around and this would have been like a shooting gallery of sorts, where the player would have to constantly look around and keep blasting them with the flares while making sure to open up the gates in a timely manner. Whatever the case for this ride segment may have been though, eventually the ride would end up on this beach, where then, after going through this shipwreck, the player would end up getting to the prison section where you normally run into Dog Day, suggesting that this may have been the original way to get into that room, as maybe these doors here were originally planned to be locked or something. Strangely enough though, if I enable seeing triggers in the game, there's actually an arrow here pointing in the other direction in the shipwreck. And normally, these arrows are a good indicator of where the player is supposed to go, but based on the gate levers being on the other side of the walls here, I don't think this arrow here is correct, at least for how this ride ended up being developed. I think it's honestly pretty nuts that the developers kept this little ride here and just sealed off the entrance as well as the exit in the prison area with just some simple walls. Like for 99% of players that play this game, they'd have absolutely no idea that just beyond these walls is a scrap section that's still somewhat functional. And then the other normally unused room in this map is found just behind this red door that you come across in this room not long from the start of this playhouse area. Now normally, of course, there's no way to open this door, but just beyond it, there's like a weird platforming-like section with these things that look like they should swing. And then in the next room are some more platforms, connected to some poles. And just judging on how these platforms are spaced apart, and the fact that you can easily jump between them, it's quite likely that there were at least some plans at some point for this to be an area that the player could enter. Unfortunately, even though we can get all the way up to the top, apart from this little vent section that doesn't seem to serve any purpose in the state, there's not really anything up at the top here. Now, to call both of these areas completely unused wouldn't be exactly accurate, as you can actually see them both while playing the game. Now granted, they're only visible during the Dog Day chase sequence, as you can see the ride area below you in one of the tunnels, and the other area above you here, so you'd be forgiven if you never really noticed that they were there since you were being chased in the darkness. But I suppose that's probably why the developers kept these rooms in the map instead of just outright deleting them. Though, I guess they also could have just covered up seeing them, like they did with the entrances and exits. Now next up, there's actually a secret lemon found out of bounds in the school area. Yeah, just behind this window here and then behind this prop is this little lemon fella. Now why is he so fascinated about an out of bounds lemon, you might be wondering. Well, this lemon is actually I guess a sort of running gag by the developers of this game. 
Now, I haven't talked about this in a video yet, but added back to the game in an update to the first chapter back in 2023 was this lemon that could be found on one of the catwalks in the ending section of the chapter before you enter the poppy room. And this lemon actually talks. Limon? 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 Now the lemon lore gets even deeper though, as there's also a secret death screen for chapter 1, which you can get after spamming the fuck out of interacting with the lemon, which will result in another sound effect titled Limon Death to play. Limon, 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 Limon. Limon. And then after, the death screen will just read, Limon, Limon. And yeah, this Limon also returns here in Chapter 3 as I guess a little secret for those snooping around in areas that they aren't normally supposed to go. Limon. 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 It's a pretty cool little Easter egg, or Easter lemon, I guess. I hope they keep hiding these in future chapters. And while we're chatting about the school, apparently, originally Miss Delight was going to function quite differently to how she's seen in the final cut of the game. So normally, she basically works like the Endos from FNAF Security Breach, where as long as you're looking at her, she'll freeze up, and will only chase you around when you break line of sight. But, as was discussed in a stream of the game on Pastra's channel, apparently originally Miss Delight would only move around while the lights would flicker and shut off, in a sort of red light green light way. Uh, when this chapter was in its early access stages, her mechanic was originally that she would move every single time the lights would flicker in the building and turn off. Oh. However, playtesters complained that it was incredibly unbalanced, so they changed her to be a weeping angel. So if you are ever wondering why the lights kind of flicker on and off, seemingly in a sort of repetitive, almost rhythmic nature, that's why. It's actually a remnant from this old mechanic. Now next up, let's go over some unused animations that were shown off by one of the game's developers, Achebe, over on X in an animation reel that he posted showcasing several things that he worked on for this game. And among the animations that are seen in the game are several that went unused, including a more elegant walk cycle for Miss Delight, which is quite the contrast compared to her usual waddle. And honestly, I can't decide which one of these is more creepy. Oh, and also in this reel, we can see a short clip that appears to show the original Miss Delight mechanic we just went over, as we can see her moving despite the player looking right at her. Anyways, next, there are also unused animations for the mini version of Bobby Bearhug preparing to jump, jumping, as well as falling. And then lastly, there's an unused animation of Catnap's bony hand trying to, I guess, grab at the player through a window, as well as what looks to be an unused jump scare animation also for Catnap. Now, it's not 100% clear where exactly this window animation was intended to be used, but just based on it being the creepy bony catnap's hand here, it's likely that this was for somewhere around the ending boss fight segment. And now, last up for this video, let's go over several bits of audio that go unused in this chapter. So I went over the early, otherwise unused radio messages found in the early version of the Home Sweet Home hallucination segment in my previous video, but there are actually a few more otherwise unheard audio files that were used there as placeholders. These include placeholder sound effects for knocking on the doors there, The very creepy baby screams heard as you approach the smile room at the end of the segment there. There's a pretty creepy sound effect of some heavy breathing. And then, oddly, there's also an unused sound effect for a huggy robot jump scare. And it seems like this is the same sound effect from the jump scare for Robo Huggy from Project Playtime, so the file name checks out. 
In any case, I can only assume that this placeholder sound effect was probably meant for an early jump scare that would result from the hallucination huggy coming from the TV here. But aside from getting the image to pop up on the TV, nothing else really seemed to happen, so I haven't been able to actually find a way to activate this sound effect in game here. And then, unrelated from that stage, next are two early sound effects for the flares shot out by the orange hand. One for firing them, as well as one for them burning up. Next, there's also placeholder background music for the intro tunnel segment, and this is actually heard in the early version of that map that I went over in my previous video. It honestly sounds pretty unsettling. Let's have a quick listen. Also, like I mentioned in the last video, now I found the file for the sound effect used for the press things clapping out of bounds listed as press boom. And then we also got some more temporary sound effects, including one for scratching glass. Breaking glass. Something powering up. And powering down. An unlocking sound. An early phone ringing sound effect. There's a grinding sound effect for some machinery. A metallic echo. A comical sounding slide squeak, akin to something used for someone slipping on a banana peel or something. I definitely want to know where that one was meant to be used. And then lastly, there are two temporary sound effects for, I guess, catnap. One for a meow. And then one for him purring, which honestly just sounds like purrs of a real cat. Now we never really see a nice side of catnap in the game where he'd meow or purr like this, so I guess it makes sense why these weren't reworked into the final cut. And now lastly, what I think are easily the most interesting bits of unused audio in this chapter are a pair of early phone call messages that reveal a completely different character that was scrapped from the game and replaced by Ollie. And also, the first of these messages starts out with what sounds like the sound of someone tuning a radio, so maybe the idea was originally that the player would communicate with this unseen character somehow differently, but anyways, the first voice clip seems to be the initial interaction that this character would make with the player. I'm glad to see you still kicking. See that door to the left? Should be a lever hitting the rapid side. And yeah, I guess that this was the one to be used in this room here, and it's kind of hard to understand the ending of that message, but I think he said there should be a lever hidden right beside. Should be a lever hitting the rapid side. And if that's the case, I guess there initially would have been a lever to open this door, instead of requiring the battery that Ollie sends you in the final version. And then, the second of the two early phone messages seems to be for right after opening this door, as the voice mentions a mess that the player made, and I assume that this mess was the train crash. Oh, and also in this message, this scrapped character actually reveals his name to be Ace. Quite a mess you made here. How'd you manage that? Doesn't matter. You need a name for me, we'll go with Ace. 
I'm making this call on Poppy's behalf. You probably don't want to talk to her right now, I get it. But trust me, she's keeping you here for a reason. Now, there's an escape in play care, but you gotta help me first. And the first favor you could do for me? Stay alive. Stay away from the playhouse. I'll call you. So, there you have it. Before Ollie was Gregory 2.0, the more grisly Ace would have been your contact here instead. It's extra interesting too, since typically as we've seen on the series, although early lines like this are just recorded by someone as a placeholder, they typically are for the same character that's seen in the final version. But this one reveals a pretty big change to the story that appears to have been made, as I assume we'll see more of Ollie in future chapters of this game. And my friends, we'll leave it there for part 2 here, and I hope you enjoy. There's still a whole bunch of unused models and textures that I want to cover, so I'm thinking one more video should do it for this chapter, so stay tuned for that. And if you're sick of poppy content, don't worry, we'll get back to other games shortly. But till then, check out some of my other Lost Fits videos, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to find your way back to the channel in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.